Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing rheumatoid arthritis and anti-rheumatoid drugs. Okay, so, uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, I had to cut off the ending to the previous video, okay, which is why uh, some new stuff has just appeared here, okay? Uh, so don't worry, I'm going to re-explain this. So at the end of the previous video, we uh, had discussed um, a bunch of monoclonal antibodies used to treat rheumatoid arthritis, okay, and the way that these monoclonal antibodies work is they bind to tumor necrosis factor alpha and neutralize those TNF alpha molecules, stop them from doing their uh, stuff, okay, and they are one of the key mediators of the chronic inflammatory state of rheumatoid arthritis, and without tumor necrosis factor alpha molecules, you're going to get huge reductions in the arthritis, basically. Okay, right. Uh, however, there are other ways to achieve the same thing as these monoclonal antibodies, which we've got four of here, uh, achieve. Okay, and uh, one of the drugs that also does what these monoclonal antibodies do, which is that it mops up tumor necrosis factor alpha molecules and neutralizes them, stops them from actually being able to carry out their function, is this molecule etanercept. Now, etanercept is described as a fusion protein, okay, which means that you've taken two unrelated proteins and you have bound them together, okay, so what have we done here, okay, well, basically, we have gone and taken the bottom of the constant region of an IgG molecule, so we've taken this portion here of an IgG molecule, Okay, consisting of the bottoms of the two heavy chains of an IgG molecule. And onto the top of those two heavy chains, we have then attached the extracellular domain of a tumor necrosis factor alpha receptor. Okay, so how does tumor necrosis factor alpha actually affect cells? Well, it works on receptors that are on the surface of the cells. Okay, now those receptors must have ligand binding domains for tumor necrosis factor alpha. Okay, and those are going to be extracellularly located. Okay, so they're going to be part of the extracellular domain of the receptor. And for short, the extracellular domain of the receptor is abbreviated to the ECD. Okay, so we have taken the extracellular domain of the tumor necrosis factor alpha receptor and fused that onto uh, the bottom portion of the heavy chain of an IgG molecule. And then, obviously, the uh, heavy chains here uh, dimerize together, and this, then, is your etanercept molecule. Okay? Now, the brilliance of this is that these uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha receptor extracellular domains are capable of binding to tumor necrosis factor alpha, okay? And just like the monoclonal antibody molecules, when they bind to that tumor necrosis factor alpha, they neutralize it, okay? And it's no longer then capable of binding to real tumor necrosis factor alpha receptors on real cells and causing its effect. So again, this is really all about just neutralizing tumor necrosis factor alpha molecules and stopping them from doing uh, their inflammatory roles, basically. Okay, right. Uh, so that concludes the anti-tumor necrosis factor alpha therapy. Okay, on a similar sort of line, we're now going to talk about anti-interleukin-1 therapy. So we discussed how tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-1 together are the primary cytokines. They are absolutely crucial for maintaining the chronic inflamed state of a rheumatoid arthritis joint and also for driving the destruction of the synovial joints, okay? So anti-TNF alpha therapy got rid of the anti the tumor necrosis factor alpha, sorry, okay? Anti-interleukin-1 therapy is going to mop up interleukin-1 and remove it from the extracellular fluid uh, in the synovial joints and thereby uh, produce an anti-inflammatory effect to treat the rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so... Uh, there is a, one major example of an anti-interleukin-1 therapy, which is a drug known as anakinra, okay? And basically, this is a protein which just happens to bind to interleukin-1. It's not a fusion protein like etanercept, 
uh, but it's a protein nonetheless that can bind to interleukin-1 and neutralize the interleukin-1, basically stop the interleukin-1 from being able to work on interleukin-1 receptors and therefore stop it from actually having the pro-inflammatory effect. Okay, right, so anakinra is the key example of a biopharmaceutical that is anti-interleukin-1. Now, there's also now a monoclonal antibody that is against interleukin-6, okay, uh, which is effective at treating rheumatoid arthritis, okay. Now, interleukin-6, in my story of rheumatoid arthritis pathogenesis, what did interleukin-6 do? It was responsible for going into the blood, causing the acute phase response, and also having effects on the brain and causing fatigue and reduction in cognition, okay? It wasn't really that important in the problems in the joints, okay? However, this is the evidence that my story isn't complete, basically. Interleukin-6 is evidently much more important than I have said it is in this video, okay? And it's much more important than we understand it to be, okay, as humans. So what I have told you is, was rather, the view of what interleukin-6 does in rheumatoid arthritis. However, the efficacy of this drug that neutralizes interleukin-6 at uh, improving rheumatoid arthritis um, shows evidently that interleukin-6 has a bigger role in the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis than we understand it to. Okay, so uh, this shows us how important interleukin-6 is. And to be honest, the three main cytokines that are involved in driving rheumatoid arthritis are tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-1, and interleukin-6. At least that's the current view now. Okay, so what's the name of this drug? Okay, well again, it's a monoclonal antibody, and it's called toco tocolizumab. Okay, so tocolizumab. Right, okay, so that is just a monoclonal antibody that binds to interleukin-6 molecules, um, sequesters them, neutralizes them, and then stops them having any functional effect, basically. Okay, and that does have a very potent uh, anti-rheumatoid effect, basically, uh, which is evidence that interleukin-6 has a bigger role than we understand in the uh, pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, right. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is tell you a few, about a few more biopharmaceuticals that work by producing immunosuppression, okay? So the first is an anti-B cell therapy, okay, which works by removing B cells, basically. So anti-B cell therapy. Okay, so what's the name of this drug? Well, it's a monoclonal antibody, and it's a chimeric monoclonal antibody called rituximab. Okay, now... What is rituximab and that monoclonal antibody against? Well, it's a monoclonal antibody against a protein that is specifically on the surface of B cells. Okay, so if I draw a B cell here, here's the large nucleus that is characteristic of lymphocytes. Okay, and basically on the surface of B cells you have a protein called CD20, and this is very specifically found on the surface of B cells. It's not found on the surface of other cells, not even plasma cells. So when B cells differentiate into plasma cells, they stop expressing this CD20. Okay, now, basically, rituximab is a monoclonal antibody against a certain epitope of CD20, okay, and it will bind to the CD20 molecules on the surface of B cells in your body. Okay, now, what does this then do? What's the effect of attaching antibody molecules onto um, a cell's surface? Well, basically, it leads to the death of that cell, just like it would a pathogen. When you cover a pathogen in antibody molecules, that's not good news for the pathogen whatsoever. Okay, the pathogen ends up being destroyed. Now, what actually ends up then killing the B cells? Well, there are loads of different mechanisms by which the B cells can be destroyed. So, uh, one of them is that antibody molecules are incredibly good at activating complement proteins on the surface of the cell which they're attached to. Okay, so you're going to be getting complement cascades now activating on the surface of the B cell, which will end up killing uh, the B cell. Okay. In addition, you can get obstinization. Okay, and this is a big word, which basically means that uh, 
phagocytes, such as macrophages and neutrophils, uh, have receptors for uh, antibody molecules, okay? And uh, when they find a cell that is covered in antibody molecules, they phagocytose it, basically, okay? So uh, B cells are going to now end up being phagocytosed by macrophages. Okay. Uh, in addition, you can also get natural killer cells attacking uh, the B cells. Okay, so NKC is a cell that we haven't really mentioned before. Okay, so this stands for natural killer cells. Basically, natural killer cells uh, can detect uh, cells that have uh, antibody molecules covered, um, uh, that are antibody molecule covered. Okay, and they can cause the cell to commit apoptosis, basically. So natural killer cells can drive this cell to commit apoptosis. Natural killer cells are extremely important in attacking virally infected cells and also cancer cells that are covered in antibody molecules, and they can cause those cells to commit apoptosis. And when they find the B cells that are covered in antibody molecules, they will likewise cause those B cells to commit apoptosis. So basically, the effect of all of this is that you wipe out B cells from your body with this drug molecule. Okay, now that's going to produce immunosuppression uh, because now you're not going to have any B cells, therefore you're not going to be producing any more plasma cells. Okay, uh, so once you've run out of the plasma cells that you currently have, and as I said, keep saying, they will gradually be removed from the body. So as the plasma cells are removed that you've currently got, then you're not going to be producing any more now that you've wiped out all of your B cells, okay? And therefore, uh, this will produce some relief from the autoimmune attack. It won't affect the T cells that have come into uh, the subintima, but it will get rid of the B cells that are in the subintima and the plasma cells that are in the subintima, and that will help to relieve uh, the autoimmune attack on the uh, synovial membrane and the synovial joint more widely. Okay, right, so that's rituximab. The final um, biopharmaceutical that I want to mention is a drug called abatacept, and this is basically another immunosuppressant, basically. And this works by stopping T cells from being activated. Now, how does it work to stop T cells being activated? Well, basically, if I go back to our picture of how uh, the adaptive immune uh, response is activated, You'll remember that the antigen-presenting cell has to present the uh, fragments of the antigen on OHC class 2 with co-stimulatory molecules. Okay, if you don't have the co-stimulatory molecules, you're not going to be able to activate the T cells. Basically, a batacept is a drug molecule, a protein, which is why it's a biopharmaceutical. It's not a monoclonal antibody. Okay, it doesn't end in the map. Uh, that binds to B7 proteins. Okay, and stops them being able to bind to CD28. Okay, so this is our abatacept molecule now. Okay, and this is going to mean that all of the B7 molecules uh, on the antigen presenting cells are going to end up coated in this abatacept and therefore uh, they're not going to be able to bind to CD28 anymore and therefore they're not going to be able to deliver signal 2 to the T cell and therefore they're not going to be able to activate the T cell. Okay, so the T cell is not going to be activated. You're going to block T cell activation. So just like tacrolimus and uh, cyclosporin, you're going to block T cell activation and therefore you're going to block uh, the immune response. And again, that will reduce the autoimmune attack on the synovial joint, and that's how it can provide relief uh, from rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so that now concludes our discussion of rheumatoid arthritis and anti-rheumatoid drugs.